Well, your first night or group is just around the corner. So I'm going to give you a few tips on how you can get started on the right foot. The first thing is you're going to want to send an email to the people who have expressed interest in your group, just reminding them of when your group's meeting, the address of the meeting location, and be sure to give them your phone number in case anybody gets lost on the way. Of course, along with that, on the night of the group, you're going to want to make sure that you have your phone on you and the volume turned up so that they can actually get in touch with you. All right, on to the kitchen. Well, nothing creates conversation like cuisine. I recommend the three C's, cookies, chips, and caffeine. Be sure to create a welcoming environment. People are a lot less likely to stick around if they're uncomfortable. Make sure that you've got enough chairs. Turn on a few lights. You know, if there's a little bit of a funky odor in your house, maybe light a candle. Well, one more serious thing that you want to do is just make sure that sometime uh, the day before your group that you spend a few minutes praying, maybe after you get everything set up and everything ready to go, uh, just sit down for a minute and, uh, and ask God to be with you that night. Remember, we're helping people follow Jesus and we need his help to do that. We can't do it on our own. Your highest priority for your first group meeting is just to help people get to know one another. You want to make sure to set aside plenty of time for conversation. Sometimes I won't even have an agenda other than that. Just help people to connect and begin to develop relationships. As everyone enters the room, you want to make sure you greet them. And if anybody's standing alone, just be sure to, to go over and engage them in conversation and help them to connect with someone else in the group. You may want to consider having people wear name tags if your group is big enough. It can be hard to remember everyone's name. And on the name front, one good thing to do is play the name game. Now this sounds a little ridiculous, but if you go around the circle and have everyone say their first name in an adjective that describes them and begins with the same letter as their first name, it really helps names stick. I still remember Adam's name because at our first small group five years ago, he said, I'm Average Adam. And ever since then, I've, I've just remembered that piece of information about him. Another thing that, again, a little silly, but sometimes can really just help people begin to, to share who they are and, and what they're about, is just to have an icebreaker. You can ask questions like, you know, what's one funny story about a childhood friend? Or tell us about the hometown that you grew up in. Your second priority for your first group meeting is just to cast vision for your small group. Why are you meeting? What do you hope to accomplish? Is this the kind of group where people can pop in and out or do they need to have consistent attendance? Is there homework involved with the group? And if so, how much? Establishing expectations at the beginning of the group keeps us from having problems later down the road. It's a lot easier to cover things up front than it is to try to change the group culture once it's already been established. All right, so your first group meeting is over. Now what do you do? Well, let's find out. Well, you've made it through the first night. Congratulations, good job. There's just a couple more things left to do. First is you're gonna to wanna to send a follow-up email just saying thanks to everyone for coming and letting them know any details they need to know for the following week. Logistics or if there's any homework that they need to complete. And then again, you're gonna to wanna to pray for your group members. Remember, this isn't just a meeting that you're having. You're helping people follow Jesus and you need his help to do that.